Today I told you we we're going to discuss something. What what was the topic? How many of you remember? Who is your father? Who is your father? <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, neighbor? Who is your father? You know, we are happy we know our father in the natural. You know, in the natural, there are people that don't know their father. You know that? They are found in orphanages. They don't know who their father are. They don't even know their mothers. These people go through a very psychological trauma that you and I that know our parents cannot understand. No matter how you try to imagine it, you can't understand what they are going through. Because they will have to deal with the fact that they were rejected. They will be asking themselves, why was I rejected? Why did my father reject me? Why did my mother reject me? And even though they may not have been rejected, it may have been out of bad circumstances. Probably accident or something, the mothers uh, or the fathers died. And then they were taken to these foster homes. But yet they wouldn't understand that. They will be dealing with all the questions. Why was I rejected? Why did this have to happen to me? How come other children have their parents, have their mothers? When they are in school, they see other children with their parents. They see their mothers visit them. They see their fathers visit them. And they will be asking, why is mine different? Why don't I have a father? Where is my father? How come my own father is not available? What happened? Why did God hate me this much? Some would even go to the point of saying, even if my father is, is here, but maybe I have one leg, at least I have a father. Amen. Even if he's got one eye, at least I have a father. They will have these questions ringing in their soul for all their existence. They will be questioning the absence of their father. If by any means anybody makes a statement and said, my father said to me, it will touch them. What is touching them is not what your father told you, but the fact that they never heard their father say anything of value to them. The importance of fatherhood is greater than anything you can imagine. If you go to America and, you know, we always use America because they have a lot of data. You know, they study things and they write it down. A lot of children that grew up in foster homes that their fathers were either in prison or died or rejected them. Or some of those children who come out of single mothers, who these men will put the women and family away and run away or reject them. These children go through a whole lot of trauma. Record shows that most of them end up in crimes. Most of them end up in different kinds of anger infested behavior. Sometimes there is no way to control them. Why? Absence of a father. The importance of a father, even when he does not talk, is great. You cannot underestimate the importance of a father. There are many of us that many things we are going through is because we have a disconnection from our father. Oh yeah. There are many things we suffer because of a disconnection from our earthly father. This is why if your earthly father is still alive, no matter whatever the reason may be, you must connect back. It is your root. It is your root. 
So the study of today, who is your father, is a deep one, but I'm going to make it light. I'm going to keep it short because we have barely 20 some minutes. Who is your father? If I ask you right now to, in your mind, I want you to do a paternity test in your mind. The test is not about if you know your earthly father, no. But if you don't know your earthly father, you gotta find out. You must find out because there is always some link that must connect to your future with your earthly father. <laughs> Let me tell you this. A, a certain brother came to me to pray for him, but while he was talking to me, the question came to me, asked him about his father. And I said, how about your father? I said, well, I don't have anything to do with my father. I, I don't want to talk to him. I don't want anything to do with him. In fact, I have disconnected myself. And I said, oh, no. Even if he's a killer, you must connect back. You must connect back. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the earth. Your father may have wronged you. I was in the Philippines, I was preaching, and a certain lady was crying because her father raped her. And she, all she wants was to die or kill her father and kill herself. And I said, oh no. Satan has used your father to break you. Right now we're dealing with, you know, restoring divine order of things. Restoring divine order of things. Many things are out of order. And that's why we suffer a lot. Because there's a lot of disconnect. So even if you have an issue with your earthly father, please, after today, go back and fix it up. Reconnect. And make peace with your father. The same with your mother. Important. But today I'm talking about Father. Father. So now, I want us to take a paternity spiritual test. How much of your earthly father do you know? Many of you know nothing about your earthly father. You just know he's your father. But other things that have to do with your existence, with your ancestry, you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. The same way it is in the spiritual. Many of us don't know nothing about our Heavenly Father. We just know where He's God in heaven. But that's all we know. And this lack of understanding, this ignorance, is the reason why we suffer a lot of things that we suffer. Because we don't know much about our Heavenly Father. Oh yeah. We don't know much. We rely only on the pastor to come and tell us. But there is a historical book called the Bible that tells you your history. The history of your Heavenly Father. Many of us only go to the Bible to look for blessing, a word of blessing only. We don't look at the Bible from a historical point of view. We don't look at the Bible to see origin of things, standard of things, quantification of things, the execution of things, and the excellency of things. They are all there question is what are you looking for to see in the Bible? How many of you know that witches read the Bible? Oh, oh, oh you don't know? Oh yeah, witches read the Bible. They read Psalm. Yeah, they 
read Psalm. In case you don't know. It is only the Christians of this generation that don't know the power in the Bible. Because we have been told, oh, it's just a religion. No, it's not. It's a powerful tool. And it is there from your father to you. This is the will of your father. The right that your father has handed over to you for your fulfilling existence upon the earth. Meanwhile, you don't know it. Many of us only see the Bible as the book that these preachers are using to deceive us. No! I told you last time, if UK, United Kingdom, relied on the Bible to colonize one third of the world, why do you think the Bible is not important? Think about it. Think about it. Now, in that, in that conference we were having with those professors, they were asking, you know, this, the use of the word dominion. The use of the word dominion. And when they were asking, I smiled. Because last year, we were discussing yeah. dominion. Yeah. Isn't that an amazing thing? Yeah. Dominion. But that single word is the word that is ruling the whole world. That single word. British has used it perfectly. Perfectly. Beyond imagination. So the Bible is important. If it controls governments, if it controls constitutions and laws in the court room, if it controls agriculture, if it controls inventions, the things that we see today, if it controls human existence, if it controls migration of people, if it controls the health of living beings, if it controls multiplication and continuation of every living thing upon the face of the earth, then I have to be interested in it. Who is your father? How much do you know about your father? How many of you know your father's name? Your earthly father, his real name, not pet name. <laughs> oh yeah. It's the same way a lot of Christians don't know the name of their heavenly father. I'm going to show you something. See, this is why you remain a child. And that's why God continues to treat you as a child. Many people will be Christians for 30, 40 years and yet remain children. They never take responsibility in the kingdom because they don't know enough. Who is your father? How much of your father do you know? If I ask any of you here, do you know of one single mistake that your father keeps talking about? Your earthly father. There's nobody without mistakes. Including me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody without mistake. How many of you can remember one single mistake that your father is always unhappy about? Whenever he remembers it, he will say, ah! I wish I didn't make this mistake. If I had known. How many of you got to talking with your father to the point that your father told you something of that nature? Important. That means that your father actually shared his heart. Until a man tells you his failure, he has not told you anything. Until a man shares his weakness, his pain with you, he has not told you nothing. When you get to know a man is when a man can trust you to share his failures with you. Share his weakness with you. That means that person trusts you. This is the same thing. How many of you have read the Bible to the point of understanding what breaks the heart of God in heaven? Or do you, you don't think his heart can be broken? <laughs> oh, you don't know. We break his heart every day. There are many things that break his heart. But unless you get to know him to that extent, he will.
will not share these deep secrets. These are the things the Bible calls the secrets of God. When you read, when the Bible says the secrets of God belong to those that fear him, you get to the point where he begins to share the deep things with you. Do you know your father? Do you know your father? Do you know your father? If I ask you, are you sure that your father's DNA is in you? Can you be sure of that? <laughs> So you go home now and go and ask your mother, Mama, who is really my father? <laughs> but you get what I mean, right? It's very simple. Look at the way your father walks. If your father is walking from that, he's walking this way. You have to see whether that trait is in you. Look at the food your father eats. Find out if you have any liking to that food. Look at his choice of clothes and all that. Find out if the traits of your father must be seen in you. If a man is really your father, is either the way he keeps his neck or the way he keeps his eye, but there must be something about man, that man, that must be seen in you. So now, can you please get your neighbor and say to your neighbor, neighbor, are you sure your father is your father? Interesting thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Can you really be sure that the man you are calling father is really your father? Or maybe you are calling somebody else father. Minister Cole, while he was praying, he quoted a place where Jesus says, Call no man on earth your father. Wow. You know, you may not know the weight of that statement, but let me show you the weight. When you read the word Son of God in the Bible, who was the first person called Son of God? Who? Ministers don't answer. Tell me, who was the first person called Son of God in the Bible? Adam. Adam. So if you call it Adama, it's the original word. Adama. Then it changed to Adamu. And English calls it Adam. But the original word is Adama. Then Adamu. English, Adam. First man called, or first person called, Son of God. Now, the second time you now hear sons of God is in Genesis 6. And that was a reference to who? Angels. Sons of God. Now, so whenever in theology we talk about sons, Directly procreated or created by God. Either by formation or by speaking. We don't know how he formed the angels. It's not in our 66 books. Right? It's not that we don't know. It is also not in several other books that I can mention to you. But we know that he formed them. He created them. But then, he created them from materials that are quite different from the materials he used for us. In our formation, the material is what? Clay, earth. Okay. 
Now, why do we always say clear? In Genesis chapter 1, it didn't say clay. It says earth. But then in the book of Isaiah, he says clay. Where he says, go to the potter's house and see what he does. And he says, are you not like the clay in my hands? But he says earth. And when you go to the original, it, take, it tells you it is the dark earth. Dirty earth. What we now in English call the humus. Humus. How many of you know that word? Agriculture. Many of you here are university graduates, right? Humus. What is humus? You know it, right? Who knows humus? Humus. Hey, well, hey. <laughs> fertilizer. Okay. Humus is not fertilizer, but it acts better than fertilizer. It is the darkest part of the earth, but it is the kind of soil that carries life. That's why you call it fertilizer. Because if you plant anything on it, bump, it's going to grow. It carries all forms of nutrients in it. It is the very life-giving part of the earth. Everything grows in it. Everything. Okay, so this is the earth that the Father used to create man. No wonder you carry life in you. Hallelujah. Okay, so because of our time. The next person referred to as the Son of God was who? Our Messiah, right? Okay. Now, our Messiah was referred to as the Son of God before ever Israel was now called Sons of God. I'm showing you a progression of how it happened in the Bible. So first we have Adama and then we have the angels referenced, and then we have the Messiah, Israel, and then finally, people of today. Whoever believes in the Messiah, he gives the power to become sons of God. Hallelujah. Okay, so as sons of God, in that, S, in that sense, in the spiritual, the Bible is saying we become adopted spiritually to have certain characteristics that originally we were not exhibiting. Are you with me now? Yes. To be a son of God, there are characteristics of God that you begin to exhibit that before was not seen in you. Before you don't manifest these acts. These characters don't show up in you. But now, as a son of God, they begin to show up. Notice this. My child does not need to work hard to exhibit any character that is a part of my person. It shows up naturally. When, if you see a man that cracks jokes, Okay, let's, let's use Sonny. Okay, let's use Sonny for instance. The other time I was watching her, his daughter here talk. I didn't need nobody to tell me this is Sonny. <laughs> because she will crack jokes so, you know, simply. It, it just comes out just like his father would. The way his father would use words. She does not need to learn why it is DNA. Blood does not lie. Blood will never lie. Wherever blood passes, it tells you the truth. Because blood keeps the truth intact from generation to generation to generation. So, I want you to go with me. Let's go to the book. Of, let's use Matthew. I want.
wanted to do something, but it looks like because of time I won't be able to do it. Let me cut it short. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Another person opened for me Malachi chapter 1, verse 6. Okay, who has Matthew chapter 7, 21? It says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the what? Will of my Father. In other words, the will of the Father showing up in you is what says that you are the child of that Father. I said something to somebody yesterday. You see, I, I was asked this question. Why is it that, you know, Africans and Filipinos and, you know, they are so religious. They go to church, you know. But, you know, the Europeans don't. You beg them and you beg them. And, and I said it's very simple. You know the answer is very simple? How many of you can guess the answer? You know, visitors can come to a house and when they are done visiting, they can pack their bag and say bye-bye and go. Children of the same house can follow them go out. But after they walk around, they will come back to the same house. Children of a family can go wherever. But after they go here and there, they come back. But visitors, once they pack their bag, they say bye-bye. It is bye-bye. Because it's a visitor. How many of you would expect your visitor to visit you and then stays forever? <laughs> It doesn't happen, right? Every visitor that visits will go. will go at some point. But children can go out, even with the visitor. They can even go out with the visitor and go here and there, but later on they will do what? That's the answer. Children of God will always come back to the house of God. No matter how deceived, no matter how led astray, no matter what, the prodigal son left for many years. Many years. Even, even you know, begin to speak other languages, do whatever. But finally, finally, he came back and said, Father, please forgive me. I don't know what I do. <laughs> Hallelujah. He came back home. Why? He's a child of the house. He's a son of the house. So Jesus says, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord. Everyone can sing it as a song. Lord, Lord. Whether Lord Abrata in UK. Or Lord, you know. Bentley or Lord Lugat. It does not matter. But he says, they that do the will. Notice that the will of the Father can only be written in the consciences of the children. My child does not need anybody to professorially tell him or her that he has done something that I don't like. Why? It's written in his conscience. It is in his blood. You, you don't need somebody to tell you you have wronged your father. It's in you. That's why the Bible says the spirit bears witness with our spirit. There is a witnessing that happens when you are pleasing God, you know. When you are not pleasing God, you know. You don't need Pastor Ike to tell you. You know it by yourself. Because the spirit bears witness. And that tells you that you are a child of God. Because the will is written in your heart. It's written in your soul. This is why for many of us, 
our sins are classified as disobedience. Disobedience means you know what is right to do, but you chose not to do it. But, but as for knowing, you know. <laughs> you know when you're doing right, and you know when you're doing wrong. You know when your father is happy with you. You know when your father is not happy with you. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Unless the man you're calling father is not your father. So Jesus says, don't call anyone your father on the earth. Hallelujah. So for some of you that will call Pope Francis Holy Father. I need to explain this because some of you call me Tata, Tata. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you call that, but you're not calling it in the taking of the place of the Most High. Mm. But that exactly is what Pope Francis, or whoever is Pope, takes. Because you have to call him Holy You get the idea? Holy Father. That's exactly the position of God. That's exactly the position of God. Call no one father on earth does not mean you have a father. You have an earthly father. Are you with me? So it's very important you understand this. Be careful not to give the glory of God to a mortal man or to any devil, not even an angel. My heart of truth, you are better than angels. Many of you are waiting to see an angel, but angels are waiting to see you. <laughs> it is the truth. The book of Revelation says angels are waiting to welcome you and say, who are these ones that look like the Messiah? But you are here waiting to see an angel praying, show me angel. <laughs> no. They are dreaming to see you. Okay. Let me begin to bring it home. So, the Bible says what actually places you as a son is that you do the will of the Father. That's number one. Number two, Malachi. Who has Malachi chapter one, verse six? I actually have about eight pages of teaching on this, but I did not know that you have program today. So because of the program, I can't go into that flow. The program has taken the time. Malachi, chapter 1, verse 6. Book of Malachi is the book after which you see Matthew. Is that correct? Okay. So verse 6 says, a son honored his father. Notice that he didn't say, uh, a son should honor his father. No, he says a son honor it. It is a must for a child to honor the father. A son honor it his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear? Said Yahuwah of hosts unto you, O priests that despise, notice this, despise my name, and you say, wherein have we despised this name? God was talking to Malachi and he says, sons honor their father. So, God is our father. And then he says, 
servants honor their master. God is also our master. The word Lord actually means master. Master. If I then be your master, where is my fear? If you call me master and you do not fear me, if you, if you call me father but you do not honor me, it says you dishonor me by dishonoring my name. It's the same as dishonoring his word. This brings me to the question again. Who is your father? Many of us honor Satan more than we honor God. Many of us fear Satan more than we fear God. Think about it. We actually honor Satan. We believe the things that Satan say more than we believe what God says. Of course, that's what happened to Adam and Eve, right? God had come and said, don't eat this fruit. Eat every other one. Leave, leave this one alone. But they finally believed Satan and obeyed Satan. And this is the same we do. We believe him much more than we believe God. I am the Lord that healed thee. We don't believe it so much. Hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. How many of you tell God about your ways? Think about it. Who is your father? The reason why this topic is with that name is because if you recognize the position that God occupies in your life, your life as a Christian will be different from what it is today. So that if you wake up in the morning and God says, take 10 minutes to be quiet before me, you will. If he says to you, memorize Psalm 36, you will. If he says to you, that beggar that sits over there, make sure you give that beggar $20 today. You will. If the spirit of the Most High says to you, that neighbor, that neighbor that has been your enemy all this while, hmm? buy McDonald's for her. You say, Chakwa. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if God is your father, you will know when these instructions are coming. Because you listen to him. One more passage I will read. Let's read Matthew chapter 5. You know, if you go down to this Malachi that we read, if you go down to chapter 2, at some point, the prophet was saying, don't we have one father? Why do we have many different characters? How is it that we have one father, but all our behavior are not showing that we have one father? Why do we have many DNAs showing up? Why do we have many characters, yet we have one father? Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 first. Verse 16 first. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven this passage touches me a lot because it tells me that what i do either rubbishes the image of god 
or lifts up the image of God. Something happened yesterday as we went to visit somebody. You know, a man was stopped in, in, in it was, he parked in front. And I came to his back and parked. These were parking meters. And so they were all filled up. But then I saw a man in the other car. And I begged him, I said, please, are you leaving so I can park here? He looked at me and then he said, okay, 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 you wait, you wait. And then he starts his car and I moved backward and he left. As I was about to go into that parking, the other man standing immediately started his own car and move. <laughs> and I said to him, what is the problem? He says, I've been waiting here, waiting here for so long. How can you come now and park? <laughs> I said, I just begged this man. He was in here. You, the man was in his car. He said, yes, I know. I said, so you saw me. I begged him and he left for me to park in. He said, that is your problem. The thing is, I have been waiting here before you. <laughs> he said, this is wrong. You must allow me because I have been here before you. I said, well, you have been here before me. That is true. But I don't know whether you are just sitting in your car and playing computer or playing games. I don't know what is going on. I don't know the reason why you are standing here. I begged this man and he left. But that man started to complain. And as he was complaining, I said to my wife, did I wrong this man right now? <laughs> because I started to think, maybe one day this man will see me somewhere preaching. <laughs> I would say, oh, you are the pastor, and then he, you are the one that threw me out of car park. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let your light so shine. Let your light shine. So, he's saying everything we do reflects on our father. In my village where we come from, in fact, in the whole of Igbo land where we come from, the whole of Igbo land, whenever somebody passes by, the first question is who is her father or who is his father? Everything you do is a reference to your father. This is what happens where we come from. Whenever somebody passes by, they will say, who is the father of that person? That's the first question everybody will ask. Whether man or woman, who is her father? Who is his father? So everybody knows that whatever you do is a rub off on the glory of your father, on the image of your father. You either lift up your father or you bring your father down to the mud. This is exactly what the Bible is saying here. Let your light shine. That men will see your good work. And do what? Lift up your father. So your actions on daily basis says who your father is. On daily basis. Let's go to verse 45. The same Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to round up with it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Brother Khan. Hallelujah. <laughs> Verse 45. Let me round up with it. It says, That ye may be the children of your father. Now, this first statement, may, he uses the word may be. So there's a possibility that you may not be. This is why I ask the question again. Who is your father? What DNA is showing up in your blood? I watched this Nigerian movie in which a man was living with his wife, with children for many years, and these children grew up. And one day the man, you know, one of the child had accident. And when they got to the hospital, the man said, the, the, child, the, 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 the boy needs blood. And the man said, I'm the father, take my blood. The doctor says, okay, only for the doctor to get the blood and it doesn't match. And the man said, what? <laughs> this is my son. He said, the blood does not match. <laughs> Hallelujah. Serious problem. Serious, serious problem. 
Hallelujah. And while the man was talking, the other son came in. And the man says, okay, doctor, don't worry, don't worry. This is his brother. Take his own. It should be okay. And they took him inside and took his blood. It doesn't match. What? This boy does not match the other boy. He said, yes. He said, they are my sons. He said, well, I just told you what we can see. So the boy looks at his father. Uh, father, what does that mean? <laughs> if you are the father, what will you say? <laughs> so, the two boys were born by different men. Isn't that bad? This passage says that ye may be the children of your father. Your DNA determines your behavior spiritually. And the same way it is naturally. So, are you still with me? Are you still with me? I want you now to begin to think deep. Why do you find it difficult to believe God? And to obey the word of God? Why? Could it be that God is not your father? Or could it be that you have learned a different thing from another? Which one is it? Because DNA does not lie. Blood produces the same. A snake must be long. Is it correct? How many of you have seen a snake looking like a frog? <laughs> Is it possible? Completely impossible, right? If I go malaya, you're gonna go. A snake must belong. So if you find a snake looking like a frog, something is <laughs> something is wrong. So the question becomes. Why do you find it difficult to be in obedience to the word of God? Two reasons. I want you to choose one. It's up to you to choose. I'm, I'm not saying you choose. Is it because God is not your father? Or is it because somebody has taught you something else different from the word of God? If you choose that God is not your father, then you better run to God now and have the adoption process start immediately. If it is because that somebody has taught you something else different, you better begin to wash off that very thing that is not right because your behavior tells us who your father is. Hallelujah. Have I made myself very clear today? Yes. Anybody has a question for me? He says that you may be the children of your father which is in heaven for he maketh the sun to rise both on the evil and on good and send the rain on the just and the unjust. Give me verse 48 please. And we will stand up as we read verse 48 together please. Can you stand with me? Who is your father? Be ye therefore, everybody can we read it together, one to go. Be ye therefore perfect. Can we do that one more time? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. You have a father that is in perfection. A father without blemish. A father without weaknesses. A father that is having nothing about poverty in his dictionary. A father that is clean. A father that is the light. The same father that says, because he is the light, you have now become a light of the world. You have a father that is called the Almighty. He says, be as your father. Why? Do you project weakness when your father is the almighty? Why do you project foolishness when your father is the God of all wisdom? 
Why do you project poverty when your father created everything in abundance and says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof? Why do you project weakness of different forms when your father is the bundle of strength? Why do you think in the negative? Why do you find it difficult to believe the word of God when he is your father? So I ask you again, who is your father? Who is controlling your philosophy, your imagination? Why must Satan control the way you think? Why do you accept weakness in your imagination when your father is the almighty? Who says you cannot do those things that God has given you in your imagination. Why do you find it difficult to believe that miracle can happen? Who is your father? Who are you listening to more? Your flesh? Satan? Or God? Who is your father? I want you today to keep this as a secret in your heart. In every circumstance you face, beat your chest and say, Yahuwah is my father. This cannot bring me down. This cannot keep me down. This cannot stop me. Nothing can stop me. I keep moving because the most high, he is my father. Keep it in your heart. Keep it as a secret. That very pill that you will swallow and say whatever will happen tomorrow, let it happen now. I must overcome. I must walk in victory. I must continue to climb higher and higher. And I refuse to fall because Yahuwah most high, he is my father. Hey, if they say who is your father, say he's the most high. He is your father. If your employer talks in such a way to put you down, say to yourself, my dignity shall remain high because the most high is my father. <laughs> if your friends, because of any reason, want to bring you down, say to yourself, Yahuwah most high is my father. And I shall continue to. Look, he says, they that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion. They cannot be moved. No matter what the enemy does. He says, even though you fall by any reason, he says the righteous may fall. But even if he falls seven times, he's going to do what? Rise! <laughs> Who is your father? The very truth that something negative had happened to you does not determine who you are. It's only an experience experiences come and go but you are the one to determine the effect that should remain from that experience who is your father who is your father the spirit of failure is not your father the spirit of weakness is not your father the spirit of fear is not your father Spirit of death is not your father. Spirit of sickness and disease of all kinds are not your father. Your father is greater than all. Keep this pill in your mind and overcome fear. Overcome rejection. If anybody rejects you, don't go killing yourself. Believe me, if five people reject you by the right hand side, there are 20 by the left hand side that are ready to welcome you. <laughs> Who is your father? If you, if you can only keep this in your mind, believe me, failure will be far from you. Because there is no mountain you cannot climb. There is no ocean you cannot cross. Yeah. There is no fire you cannot walk through and keep moving. Hallelujah. 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 
Are you ready to call on your father now? Oh my goodness. When the minister Ko was talking about Elijah and Elisha, my spirit was jumping. Because immediately I was remembering how Elisha shouted, My father! My father! When you recognize that God in heaven is your father, it changes everything. It changes every... Look, as I am here now, I don't wait for my children to worry about what they will eat, how they will go to wherever they will go to, their protection, whatever. It is my own worry. And this is the same way God says, I know the thoughts that I think about you. Thoughts of good. Why? He is your father. Hey. Hey. Only if you can understand this word, who your father is, it will change the way you imagine. And I want that to change because your imagination is everything. Your imagination rules you. I want you to begin to talk to your father now. Go ahead. Talk to your father. Talk to your father. 